Hello and welcome. In my previous uh, session, I talked about parasexual behavior in prokaryotes, specifically focusing on transformation. As I told you, parasexual behavior includes three different types of methods by which DNA is transferred from outside to inside of the recipient cell. And in this parasexual behavior, you have a donor cell or donor DNA and the recipient cell. Today, I am going to talk about the second process of uh, a DNA transfer among the bacterial cells by way of conjugation. As I mentioned, conjugation includes a cell-to-cell -cell contact between two cells. Out of these two, one is donor cell and another is recipient cell. So we are going to learn today about this process, how it takes place and how it has helped in mapping the gene over chromosome. So before I start, uh, a request that those of you who have not subscribed my channel, please do so and hit the bell icon so that you get information about my future videos. Okay, so let us first um, ask about the basic question, uh, what is conjugation? You know, so as I mentioned, conjugation as definition is basically a gene transfer between donor and a recipient cell by direct physical contact. You know, what we saw in transformation, it is the transfer of uh, naked DNA from outside to inside, you know. So as a different mode of DNA transfer, in conjugation, we have uh, the participation of two cell types, out of which one is donor, another is recipient, okay? And the DNA physically moves from donor cell to recipient cell, you know, thus completing the DNA transfer process. And once the DNA is transferred, it recombines with the host chromosome of uh, the recipient cell. I mean, that is the uh, concept behind. So we have in this process mating type of bacteria. It means uh, there are two types of cells. Uh, one we call donor, which donates the DNA, and another, another is the recipient cell which receives the DNA. So in that sense, you can say that these cells are mating types, two different types of cells. Uh, means a donor cell can, will always remain a donor cell and a recipient cell will always remain a recipient cell. Okay, so that's the way it goes. Now, <clears throat> over a period of time, this aspect has been worked out um, and everything is known, you know, and what I'm going to do is just to brief you about this process, intricacies of this process. So why a donor cell is a donor cell? You know, because these donor cells have what we call fertility factors, you know, which recipient cell doesn't have, you know. So, and also we call it as F factor, you know. Now, recipient cell, as I mentioned, lacks this. Okay, so the difference between donor cell and the recipient cell is this uh, uh, F factor or fertility factor. Now we know that this fertility factor resides on a extra chromosomal structure, what we call plasmids. Okay, so this is the, uh, in fact, 
the study on con of conjugation process led to the discovery of plasmids in general. And again, a lot of work has gone in and we know the role of plasmids uh, uh, in bacterial uh, life cycle and also uh, the recombinant DNA technology, genetic engineering, uh, and uh, I'm not going to talk that part today, but I will continue to focus on uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, plasmid, uh, which we call uh, F plasmid or fertility plasmid, because this plasmid has all the factors which are required for uh, for for so-called fertility of bacterial cell, and also it becomes a donor cell. It donates the uh, and the foreign DNA or the chromosomal DNA, okay, to the recipient cell. Um, what makes this plasmid as fertile or fertility plasmid? We we all we we know everything about it. There are certain genes which this plasmid contains. We call it as uh, tra genes or the transfer genes, which are responsible for transfer of uh, uh, of uh, the 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 DNA from donor to recipient. Okay, and we also know that this plasmid contains uh, certain <clears throat> certain uh, genes which are responsible for initiating cell to cell contact as well. Okay, so before I proceed, let me uh, talk about a little bit about these plasmids, just to make you understand what these plasmids are. In general, uh, as I mentioned, a lot of work has uh, gone in, and we know that. Uh, these plasmids have certain general features. For example, as you saw, the plasmids are also basically uh, a circular DNA molecules, uh, and they are capable of independently replicating, um, independent of the chromosomal DNA. Okay, uh, so both, I mean, I mean the, the the size varies from few kbs to hundred kb. The plasmid size, if we talk about, um, and also we know that plasmids are not basically um, essential for the growth of bacterial cell. Okay, uh, and they also contain uh, certain genes for their own maintenance, which are not present on the chromosome. Means how these plasmids maintain themselves in the host cell, wherever they are, a generation after generation, uh, those genes are present or located on plasmids, okay? And uh, very importantly, they contain antibiotic resistance gene. If a, if a factor which I talked about uh, previous, uh, uh, previous uh, video when I was talking about transformation, that uh, antibiotic resistance was uh, uh, used as marker for selecting uh, the, the transformants. And uh, similarly here, when we talk, when we want to isolate uh, or select a, a conjugated cell after conjugation, these antibiotics, uh, the resistance uh, worked as marker actually. And another thing for plasmid own DNA replication, it uses the host cell uh, DNA replication machinery. It doesn't have any of those factors or genes which are responsible for DNA replication. So they heavily rely on the host um, cell uh, DNA replication machineries. And very interestingly, the number of these plasmids per cell, it uh, varies from uh, 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 organism to organism, you know. So different bacteria have different number of uh, plasmids, and depending on um, on uh, the number of plasmids present uh, in a cell, uh, the plasmid can be a uh, high copy number or the low copy number plasmid. Okay, so this is in general what we understand today about plasmids. So to come back to the point of our discussion, that during conjugation. Uh, there is uh, a cell-to-cell -cell contact between donor and the recipient cell. Uh, this is facilitated by the presence of a F plasmid or fertility plasmid in the donor cell. 
Okay, so the uh, the factors or the genes which are responsible for uh, for uh, uh, the the conjugation process and the gene transfer are located on this uh, plasmid. So the presence of this plasmid in a cell makes that cell as donor cell. And a cell which does not have this plasmid uh, remains the recipient cell or F minus cell. So, so of the same species, some few cells may be F plus cell, those who have acquired, acquired this plasmid, and others may be F minus cell, which, uh, which lacks this plasmid. Okay, so fine. Uh, <clears throat> so as I mentioned here, that uh, uh, a cell which has this uh, plasmid, which we call F plasmid, it becomes F plasmid uh, uh, or, or, or um, F plus cell, F plus cell, okay, and. Uh, it has a very low frequency of uh, host chromosomal DNA transfers, okay? So in general, a donor cell is uh, a F plus cell containing this F plasmid in it, okay? Now, now what happens here? So this is the F plus cell, you know, and uh, F plus cell donor cell. So it has this F plasmid, and this is the host chromosomal DNA. And you have a recipient cell which only has the host chromosomal DNA and doesn't have the, uh, the F plasmid. So it is F minus. And as I mentioned, there will be, so these two cells come closer to each other and form a conjugal, a conjugal tube through which, you know, this F plasmid uh, uh, DNA starts moving uh, towards the recipient DNA. Okay by a rolling replication cycle, sorry, a circle, uh, the regular uh, DNA replication which takes place in prokaryotes, uh, it, it has the same, it has a you know, origin of uh, replication uh, and uh, the, this DNA starts replicating and the DNA starts moving through this tube and establishes, establishes itself here in the recipient cell as plasmid. So, so you are seeing that as a consequence, this F, minus cell, which was F minus, becomes F plus by acquiring this, uh, this plasmid uh, from the donor cell, it becomes the F plus cell. So in a mixture of F plus cell and F minus cell, this process goes on between F plus and F minus cell until all the cells in a, in a, in a mixture of cells uh, becomes F plus. So, so, you are seeing as a consequence, this F minus also becomes F plus cell. Okay, now, uh, so this is the mechanism here that the DNA transfer follows. That uh, there is a nick on the ori origin of transfer, and then it is the rolling circle replication of DNA which moves. Another point which I want to make here is that this DNA moves as a single stranded DNA, not as double stranded DNA, and the, the second strand is synthesized in the host uh, uh, recipient cell and establishes this plasmid in the recipient cell, okay? Now, if this plasmid has acquired some of these uh, host cell genes will also move along with this plasmid. This part we will talk about a little later. So this is as a process, uh, what happens in when the F plasmid moves from donor to recipient. Now, another <clears throat> possibility here is that uh, this plasmid, F plasmid, which is, um, which is present in the donor cell, it gets uh, integrated into the host chromosome. So instead of existing as independent uh, plasmid structure, it gets integrated and forms a structure like this. This is the host chromosome, and this plasmid DNA also got integrated, you know, into this. And generating a cell, what we call HFR cell, or high-frequency recombinants, okay? So from F plus cell, it is becoming HFR cell, or 
high frequency recombining cell. Okay, so how this HFR is generated by way of uh, uh, of integration of F plasmid into the um, host chromosomal DNA. You know, <clears throat> so once this cell is generated, so HFR cell is also a F sort of donor cell. So it is a donor cell, which the difference here is that plasmid got integrated into the host chromosome. Okay, then, then what happens? When this HFR cell comes in contact with a F minus recipient cell by following the same procedures or process as happened in the previous case, you know, the conjugal tube is generated. And now, you know, <clears throat> this, this, uh, uh, this uh, DNA transfer again is initiated because this F plasmid is integrated here um, uh, from the origin of transfer point. And then uh, following this rolling circle replication, you know, instead of plasmid, the whole chromosomal DNA of the donor cell starts moving from HFR donor cell to F minus recipient cell. This whole thing starts moving like this, you know. And uh, once the conjugation is stopped, you see the F minus cell, uh, you know, receiving this uh, part of the uh, donor chromosomal DNA, which uh, recombines with the, you know, uh, F minus host chromosomal DNA, uh, you know, and uh, uh, generating recombinants. You know, this is, means whatever genes are located on this piece of uh, uh, donor uh, chromosomal DNA, you know, and if there are homologous region here, they get recombined here, you know, and you get uh, HFR, I mean, the, the HFR remains HFR and F minus generates recombinants. Now, the difference here in the previous case scenario and this scenario, here the HFR cell remains HFR cell and F minus remains F minus because it is not acquiring the entire F plasmid. It, it just requires part of the F plasmid and uh, some of the uh, part of the host chromosomal DNA, you know. So therefore, it will remain always F minus and HFR will remain HFR cell. Means it will remain donor cell and is ready to, to conjugate with other minus cells, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, converting them into recombinants recombinants with the genes of the donor uh, host chromosomal DNA, they move to the recipient cells. Okay. So this is second way of, uh, uh, of uh, conjugation with high frequency of recombination. You know, here, uh, it, by, by way of um, HFR conjugation with F minus cells, uh, this shows very high frequency of recombination. Uh, and of course, this follows a homologous recombination process. Okay, now third way, uh, what happens? These HFR cells, as I mentioned, uh, here the F plasmid gets integrated into uh, the the donor uh, chromosomal DNA. Now, what happens? Sometimes this uh, plasmid it tries to come out of the host chromosome. Uh, by following natural process of uh, of uh, recombination, and while 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 doing so, what happens? This excision of F plasmid is not precise, like the way it got integrated from here to here. Rather, uh, one nick takes place in the F F plasmid region, and another can be in the host chromosomal region, generating a plasmid structure like this, you know, and leaving behind part of the F plasmid in the host chromosome and, uh, and then taking uh, the remaining part of the F plasmid into the plasmid and along with it, it also has uh, the uh, host chromosomal part of the DNA. 
and generating is a, a plasmid which we call F plasmid, F prime plasmid. It's not uh, F plasmid because it is lacking part of the plasmid portion here, you know, and acquiring some of the part from the host chromosome, you know. So you have F plasmid, but here it is F prime plasmid, means it is not uh, the true F plasmid uh, because it lacks some part of the, uh, the uh, F plasmid. Now, what is the, uh, now this is also highly recommending uh, uh, plasmid or because it is taking along with it the donor cell DNA into the recipient cell DNA, you know. So it also generates recombinants, you know. So this is what happens uh, uh, as a part of the mechanism. You have a cell which contains the F uh, prime plasmid, you know, so donor cell and you have a recipient cell which is F minus cell, you know. And so after conjugation, this plasmid, like the F, uh, F plus cell, it also uh, start, uh, uh, it, it also starts uh, replicating here uh, by a nick at the uh, origin of transfer point, and then it moves here, and this F prime uh, plasmid moves to the F minus cell, generating another F prime cell, or a cell containing F prime plasmid. So you generate two uh, recipients. Uh, uh, one is, of course, donor cell remains F prime plasmid, uh, F prime cell, or a cell containing F prime plasmid, and the recipient cell also become uh, F prime uh, cell containing F prime plasmid, and this also, you know, this then becomes a donor cell, and it will, uh, uh, it will try to donate this to the other F minus cells. You know, and this process will continue until in a mixture of uh, uh, F prime plus cells and the F prime minus cell uh, are there. So long in the mixture F minus cells are there, this process keeps on happening. Now, if you see here what's going on, that these plasmids are containing part of the donor DNA here, you know, and these cells, if, if they are, if these genes are present in the Post chromosome also. So, what will be the consequence? The consequence would be the generation of uh, partial diploids. They are bringing another allele uh, to the recipient cell, you know, here. So, uh, this part is from here, from here, you know, this part. So, if these genes, uh, which, which it has acquired, this plasmid has acquired from, from, from this host, you know, it is moving to this. And if the recipient cell has these. Uh, and genes here, a copy. So then it becomes a uh, double allylic cell for these genes which are located in this small part of, uh, of the host chromosomal DNA. And so, or mirozygotes or partial diploids are generated like this. And uh, we have talked about the role of partial diploids in molecular genetics, you know. So, and, and, and they also show the recombination. For example, if the recipient is, is has a mutant allele, and the incoming allele is uh, uh, wild type allele. Then, by virtue of uh, this moving into a wild type allele, moving into it, this cell becomes uh, 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 um, a wild type cell because uh, the complementation process. I talked about this. You know, this uh, mutant allele on the host chromosome of um, F minus cell is. Uh, when it is re receiving a wild type allele through this plasmid transfer, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, it complements and the phenotype of this cell becomes um, a wild type rather than the mutant type, you know. Uh, <clears throat> okay, now what happens here, for example? Uh, so these are the three ways uh, to conclude this part uh, what's going on, uh, there are three ways of conjugation. The F uh, plus cells, HFR cells, and F prime cells, or cells containing F prime plasmid. F prime plasmid is incomplete, just to remind you. Uh, it's, it, it has part of the F plasmid, and uh, the uh, remaining part is a post-chromosomal DNA, you know. 
uh, where it is residing. Okay, so these are the three types of cells generated. Okay, now <clears throat> what happens? You know, uh, if you have a HFR cell like this, you know, uh, wherein the this is the F plasma got integrated, and you have a F minus cell. You know, um, so these two cells they come closer to each other. You know, and then this uh, this uh, donor DNA starts getting transferred to the um, uh, F minus cell. And when the cell separates, you know, this separation actually what happens? Uh, since the size of the this uh, this uh, F plus and the host chromosomal uh, DNA is too large, and this transfer of the whole to complete the transfer of this whole thing into the recipient cell takes longer time plasmids are smaller in structure so f plasmid can be moved from uh, one cell to another in a in a in a quick time but if this whole whole chromosomal dna along with f plasmid is to be transferred to the recipient cell it is going to take a lot of time but what happens in nature this this Mating cells cannot be, cannot hold themselves together for a longer period of time. As a consequence, what happens? These two cells get separated before this whole thing gets transferred here. Okay. So as a consequence, uh, when, when when the cell stops, uh, I mean the uh, they separate from each other. This transfer also separates, uh, leaving behind a scenario like this. You have. You have this part of this moved into the cell, and then this part gets recombined with the host chromosomal DNA to give you recombinants. And since this is this is taking along with it a large portion of the host chromosomal DNA and a little bit of the uh, F plasmid also, you know, so these uh, these uh, uh, the, the cells after recombining shows high frequency of recombination. So this is what precisely happens uh, in, the, uh, in the conjugation via HFR cells, okay? Like what I was trying to um, mention, it is something like this. So if you have a bacteria, and this is the host chromosome, uh, which is say Lu minus or mutant. So the phenotype of this F minus cell is Lu minus. It means these cells lack the ability to synthesize amino acid leucine. Okay. Now, what is happening when the donor DNA, when it enters through HFR cell or through F prime plasmid, in general, I'm talking about uh, which is the donor, if the donor is Lu plus, so it is carrying this Lu plus uh, allele into this cell, recipient cell. So then what happens when this gets recombined with the host chromosome, then you have a scenario like this. So you have this Lu plus is entering here into the host chromosome and it is going to complement the minus uh, uh, allele of the host recipient cell and converting this whole cell as Lu plus cell. Okay, so that's how, and now it is actually a mirror deployed or partial deployed. Uh, for this allele, there are two copies of this allele present in this cell. Minus is already there and plus enters into it. Okay. And when this cell divides, so you can see many Lu plus cells are uh, generated because of this. And these fragments are lost in the uh, cell division. Okay. So this is what happens uh, in uh, high frequency recombinations or uh, F prime uh, recombination. It's the same if the plus F prime plasmid moves in, which has this Lu plus phenotype, then you, it will convert minus recipient, my, Lu minus recipient to Lu plus recipient. Okay. So this is what happens in process of conjugation. Now, the second question is how this process has helped the gene mapping uh, on the chromo uh, bacterial chromosome. Okay, uh, you know, we, uh, we uh, saw in the transformation, we were looking for co-transformants as a consequence of transformation. When the two, um, two 
genes are sitting close to each other, they tend to uh, generate co-transformants. So higher the frequency of co-transformants, closer the two genes are. Okay, that's the plus we followed in that kind of mapping, if you remember. But in this um, in this mapping, you know, and we don't look for uh, co-transformants, but we follow a interrupted mapping um, philosophy or approach. So, what is this interrupted mapping? Map mapping, and what we look for. Actually, uh, in this mapping, we try to monitor the time of entering of a particular uh, trait into the from donor to recipient. So, what we are following that the time of entry of a particular uh, gene from donor to recipient, when the two cell conjugate, what is that earliest time a gene is entering into the recipient cell? Okay. And uh, as I mentioned, in nature also, the conjugation process is interrupted uh, because this uh, before the whole chromo, uh, uh, donor whole uh, donor uh, chromosome is chromosomal DNA is transferred to recipient cell. So therefore, only part of the uh, pa uh, part of the um, host chromosomal DNA moves from donor to recipient. So same thing here. Uh, we try to do it in uh, in experimentation. We disrupt this mating. First, we allow mating to take place, and then we disrupt it at different times, which we know, and then follow uh, the appearance of a particular marker gene into the uh, recombinants. Okay, so that's the I mean the experimental approach that we look for. We look for. Uh, appearance of or the earliest time of entry of a particular marker gene into the recipient cell when we interrupt the mating uh, at different time intervals. Okay, so if you have followed this, let us look at this example and uh, what is done here experimentally that uh, we have um, a, a donor cell which has, which is the HFR cell, which is LU plus as I told you earlier in the previous example, and uh, and the streptomycin uh, sensitive cell, uh, and you have a uh, F minus cell and Lu minus cell and streptomycin resistant cell. Okay, so you have a donor cell, HFR donor cell, which is Lu plus and streptomycin sensitive. I will tell you why these are taken. And then you have F minus cell. This is the recipient cell. This is the donor cell, which is Lu minus and the streptomycin resistant. So you, what you, what is done here? You mix these two cell population of donor and recipient, okay, and allow cells to establish their contact, you know, and then you uh, disrupt the mating by. Uh, vortexing the uh, cell mixture or uh, using uh, um, the grinders, you know, to shake the cells violently so that the the this uh, this uh, cells which have attached they separate out. Okay, so that's how experiments are performed, and then this mixture which is uh, disrupted is plated on a media containing streptomycin cells. Okay. Now, when you plate this mixture on streptomycin cells, what it will happen? It will eliminate all the donor cells because they are sensitive to streptomycin. So all these cells will die. These cells will survive. The recipient cells will survive because they are resistant cells. So in this in these uh, cells, you look for uh, whether they are Lu plus or not because this Lu plus will be only when a Lu plus uh, part of the DNA or allele moves from donor to recipient and recombines with the host chromosome, then only you can see uh, the this uh, recipient cell becoming Lu, uh, from Lu, uh, Lu minus to Lu plus. 
Okay, so this is the way this experiment was done. And uh, the, the meeting was interrupted at different times, you know, 0, 3, 6, 9, these are time and minutes, you know. Uh, and this is the number of recombinant. What recombinant? Lu plus recombinants were, uh, uh, were observed, you know. So if you are taking 100 cells, HFR cells, donor cell, and 100 recipient cells, which are minus cells, you know, or F minus cells, these, these type of cells. So, so out of this mixture of 100, 100, you, you know, uh, get these numbers of recombinants. Say like three minutes, you know, zero, there is nothing because no uh, conjugation established and the transfer took place. After three minutes, nothing. After six minutes, you see first uh, Lu plus cells, few cells generated, which the number increases, you know, with this time of mating. Okay. And after that, this, uh, this number gets stabilized. It means, uh, it means even, uh, I mean, it means after the, the DNA has gone in, I mean, the part of the host chromosome, which has the Lu plus allele, once it has reached, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 any amount of increase in the mating time is not going to affect or is not affecting the number of recombinants generated. Okay. So, but then initially, yes, uh, uh, if, if, you, if you, from zero to say uh, 18 minutes, zero to 18 minutes, there is an increase, steady increase in the number of recombinants. You know, it means the number of cells which are getting um, in the mixture of 100 plus 100, receiving this uh, uh, Lu plus allele increases because more cells, they recombine and, you know, establish this. And once all the, <clears throat> uh, once the, uh, the all probable cells have uh, uh, received that, that number then reaches, uh, it becomes constant, okay? So like that, we try to find out uh, how different markers appear uh, on the chromosome in terms of uh, their entry into the recipient cell. So we are monitoring time of entry, okay? Uh, so for example, we generate a data like this, you know, so you have, different mark, uh, uh, marker genes, you know, B, A, B, C, D, E, you know, which are appearing in the recipient cells at different times of uh, entry. So this kind of time of entry map was generated by extrapolating back here. So uh, when you extrapolate, you know, this may appearing at the sixth, sixth minute, but we didn't see for example, between three and six, three is zero, six, uh, six minutes, you get C recombinants, you know. So that uh, that information came when this graph was extrapolated down to this line, which is time in minutes, means four minutes. Four minutes, similarly, B marker uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, 10 minutes, like this. So we, uh, this kind of map was, line maps were generated for different markers, actually. Uh, okay, A, B, C, D, E, then F, G, H, like this. So all these different, not in one experimentation, different experiments were performed, like I explained to you. And these kind of linear maps were generated for different genes. And then all this data was uh, put here in the circular form. Uh, by, uh, and this these indicates basically the time of entry of these um, marker genes from donor to recipient. So by uh, using conjugation as a uh, as a tool, uh, various uh, mappings of different genes on our chromosome uh, was done. Okay, so I will stop here and uh, and uh, to conclude, what I have tried to explain to you very briefly this process of conjugation what this process is and uh, how this process has been utilized for uh, gene mapping or um, on the chromosome. And this mapping is different. We try to find out the time of entry of a marker gene from donor to recipient. 
So thank you for patient hearing. And once again, if you have not uh, subscribed my channel, please do so. Uh, and uh, hit the bell icon so that you get uh, information about my future uh, 